yeah, I guess I'm going to talk a bit about the movement, uh, the student movement that we've seen in Quebec in the past uh, past period. Uh, but to understand why this happened, uh, which turned out to be the biggest movement that we've ever seen in the history of Can in the history of the entire country, um, you have to understand why the increase in tuition, which is an increase of one thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars, uh, why that was necessary for the government to implement that. It wasn't just because they were, in my opinion, it wasn't just because they were mean guys or something and they wanted to take it out on the students. Um, but it, um, it was because of, you know, this is connected with the general, you know, we've seen starting in 2008, we saw a general crisis of the, the capitalist system. And uh, Canada was not immune from this. We saw massive bailouts given to the banks. Um, yeah, 100 and... 14 billion dollars were given to the major banks that were exposed to the subprime mortgage crisis in the states. Um, there was massive losses in the pensions that were invested in private markets and things like this. Um, but also before this, the government had been started had been starting a dialogue talking about the need for a, a cultural revolution in Quebec. The provincial government had been talking about this. And Quebecers need to get used to paying more for services and specifically talking about tuition. Um, in, in Canada, Quebec is the province that has the lowest uh, tuition fees in the entire, uh, in the entire quant country. So this is a big, big question for Quebec students and the Quebec student movement has traditionally been more militant and they've been able to defend the, the accessibility of education in the country and even putting the demand of free education forward. Um, so, and the reason why the government was saying we need a cultural revolution specifically was not just, again, not just because they're mean people or something, but because they had a massive uh, provincial debt that they placed close to 100% of GDP, which if you look compared to other uh, major industrial countries, that's uh, one of the worst in the, <laughs> one of the worst in the industrial world. Um, so, you know, this was a real need for the government to, you know, it was a question of basically who's, who's paying. Who's paying for the, the the debt of the government? And they, they chose to take it out on, you know, there's a number of cuts, the the attacks that they put forward on unions and workers, and but but in this this budget they, they chose to mainly target students. They were going to settle with the student movement and then uh, move on to maybe other sectors of the economy, which they had made quite clear. Um, so this tuition increase that they plan on putting forward was yeah 16, uh, like I mentioned, was 1,625 dollars. And the student movement started mobilizing last fall for opposition to this. They planned a one-day general strike on November 10th, which actually most people were surprised at how, uh, how huge it was. There was, uh, at the end, the amount of students that were on strike was over 300,000, which is over 75% of all post-secondary students, including colleges and universities in Quebec. Uh, and there was a big demonstration in Montreal of 30,000 people, which, yeah, was pretty big. Everyone, a lot of people were kind of surprised about that. Um, then started, and they had, they said, and the government did refuse to negotiate, refused to back down on anything. Said, yes, basically, that's very nice, but we're still going ahead with the tuition increase. Um, then, starting in February, schools they had a plan for a in Quebec what they call a general unlimited strike. Uh, starting in February, so they basically went on an all-out strike, and the the numbers slowly climbed up to, uh, actually quite quickly climbed up to. 200,000 on strike by March 22nd and there was a huge demonstration downtown Montreal which I was surprised <laughs> I think everybody was there was over 250,000 people in downtown Montreal uh, and the government I think was a bit, I think everyone was shocked by this um, following this uh, you know this during this whole period there's picket lines blocking all the major universities by students there's tens of thousands of students involved in this movement uh, in one fashion or another. Um, there's also, they call it a manifestation familiale, it was like a family demonstration where they had on the weekend, they held them on the weekend, yeah, 50,000 people show up. And it's mostly not students, it's parents and strollers, you know, things like this. And uh, so you see the support that the students have amongst the general population, amongst the working class. And you also saw this on the big demonstration on March 22nd where walking down the street, People out of shops and in, in apartment buildings raving, waving uh, red towels or whatever they had because the symbol of the student movement is the red square. So you saw that the effect that this started to have. 
uh, amongst the general population. Yet another big demonstration on June 22nd, uh, which was around the same amount, 200, 250,000. They started calling them every, every month, every 22nd. Um, by this time, <clears throat> around June, the government, uh, I don't know the exact date, but the government had gotten, they had kind of took in the uh, approach of a vicious media slander campaign against the students, calling them rioters and this sort of thing. During this, actually I haven't even mentioned this, <laughs> they uh, had quite vicious repression of the students. In Canada, like, the most vicious repression we had seen was actually uh, at the G20 which you probably heard about, uh, where they arrested 1,100 people, most of which they have released on because they they arrested them under false. They had no, ch there was no charge really. It was just, um, but this, the Quebec movement quickly. The arrests were much higher than this. Already they've gotten over three three thousand arrests in just a few months. In just the first few months, they had three thousand arrests. So the government had, you know, tried tried. They were trying a number of things. They were trying slander in the media, and. Uh, and this whole thing, but that wasn't working, it was just spreading the movement more. And then they tried repression, it was spreading the movement more, more students were getting involved. And then uh, by June, they, they put forward a harsh law, uh, Law 78, which basically banned any demonstration of over 50 people uh, that didn't get a pre-approval from the police to demonstrate uh, and give their trajectory of where they're going and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, so, and there was a number of things with that law, they took away Basically, the university had the right to basically make the student union legal. The funding to the student union would be illegal. A number of things like this. I actually didn't even specify student union. It would apply to workers' unions as well. So this is a big shock to the movement. And again, every time that the government tried to take the heavy hand with the movement, the same this happened again. This <clears throat> this law spread the movement bigger than it had ever been before, which was already quite huge. As you see, there was massive demonstrations of 200 and 250,000 people. Uh, and other demonstrations as well, there was many small actions. It was the type of thing where if you didn't want to go to a demonstration in Montreal, you would have a hard time. <laughs> you were going to one, whether or not you wanted to. There were small demonstrations of 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 people, constantly, most days. Uh, so the law that they implemented uh, caused this huge explosion among society. We saw the casserole protests, wh which also showed the, the increased spread of this, this support for this movement amongst the working class. We saw people have started every single night, starting at 8 o'clock, coming out on the street, banging pots and pans. I had, uh, I had no idea what this was. The first night I walked out of my apartment and I uh, had a red square on, I saw a bunch of kids, 10-year-old kids, banging pots and pans, and they saw I had a red square and they were like, yeah! And I was, uh, I was like, who, who are they? And I quickly found out that this had, in over 40 different neighborhoods in Montreal, there's these spontaneous casserole demonstrations. It was mostly uh, not students, actually. I, I, barely, I rarely saw that many students in the, these demonstrations. Every single night, 40 different neighborhoods, there was hundreds of people. In my neighborhood, there was 500 people the first night banging pots and pans, basically saying, uh, one of the slogans that they raised was, on a plus que 50, were more than 50. <laughs> and they didn't give their uh, trajectory to the police, so they were illegal. So it was basically, this anti-democratic law spread the movement like wildfire. Then in, uh, on, uh, sorry, in, I think I skipped it, uh, May, May 22nd is, no, sorry, May 22nd is when they, May is when they implemented the, the law. May 22nd is when we saw uh, the unions all mobilized because they were against this law and they mobilized a massive demonstration, a massive, massive show of civil disobedience against this law. And uh, that was the biggest, again, they, against, they, they, they beat the numbers they had previously, and they had over 400,000 in the streets of Montreal. Uh, and again, this, the, the casserole demonstrations continued. Throughout this period, uh, it's kind of hard to cover everything because throughout this period there also was nightly, night demonstrations. The first one had started when the government expelled the student negotiators from the negotiations and they continued for two months where you had 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 people in the streets every single night. I'm not even talking about the casserole demonstrations, I'm talking about other demonstrations that were happened, that started happening where there was thousands of people that would march for six, seven hours into the night, late into the night and uh, yeah, shouting on the street with us and people would come out of their buildings, come out of the apartments and it was really 
quite an astounding thing. The, and the police started repressing this. They were using the Law 78 to repress the night demonstrations, which they said were moving to hard application of the law, where they, they uh, on one day, they rounded up. They kettled the demonstration, cut it off. They rounded up. On one day, they arrested 500 and... I can't remember the exact numbers, 500 and something people in Montreal and another 170 something in Quebec City because they had other demonstrations in other cities as well. But this showed the the uh, the immense um, will to fight of the students. Where they, they still they're still struggling. Uh, the government was forced to basically cancel all the classes, and they're moving to. Uh, they were unable to crush this. There was a concession. They had to basically, you know, okay, we're canceling all the classes. And uh, and uh, they're hoping. I think the government's hoping now that they'll, this will cause the student movement to die down. Students will go back into apathy and and stop basically trying to have a say in what's going on, <laughs> um, which obviously is problematic from a democratic point of view. Um, so their plan now is to have a makeup session in August uh, for the for the classes that were cancelled before, trying to basically cram all of the months before into one month. Um, of course, now this infringes on the teachers' contract, where the, stage, the co college teachers and the university teachers are basically refusing to teach for this month because it's something outside of their contract, it's more work. But that's coming in like a week or so and we'll see what happens with that. Um, anyway, in my opinion, what, what is required and uh, something that we've been putting forward in the movement in Quebec as, la, as uh, the Tendance Marxist International, based around the Journal La Riposte, is that we need to bring the workers into the struggle. The students have, have given all they can, as all, what have I explained, massive demonstrations, hundreds of thousands of people. But the, at the end of the day, the students, the, who holds the real power in society is that parents of these students, they have jobs, you know, aunts, uncles, parents, all these people that have shown that they support it in one way or another. Coming out on some of the demonstrations, uh, in the casserole protests in the neighborhoods, but we've been saying that the, the student movement needs to organize delegations to go to all the workplace and talk about the idea of the workers coming to the struggle in a concrete manner for say a 24-hour general strike which would be a completely different <laughs> thing for the government is that yeah the students protest oh yeah just go home you know go home this is kind of what the government's saying yes making uh, snide comments about these kids these little kids protesting and the parents are taking control of their kids and things like this but you know if the working class comes into the struggle that can that can change the uh, change the whole the whole situation fundamentally. Where that would cost the capitalists, the government, the, the capitalists who back up the government, millions and hundreds of millions of dollars every day. They go on strike, go on strike with this, and 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 also it would show by coming out on a strike list, show the working class that they actually have the power to decide. You can't make you can't make us pay more for our kids kids education. And, uh, you know, at the same time giving exorbitant bonuses to university uh, board of directors and governors and things like this. Um, anyway, I don't know if there's anything much more to say about the movement, but that's my general, that's generally what's been happening in, in, uh, in Quebec. Um, there's also some plans in English Canada to start trying to mobilize for a strike because it hasn't spread, it's been pretty much exclusive to Quebec. And that's something that we've been calling for as well, is to, is to spread this strike to the to the rest of the countries for the, the Canadian Federa Federation of Students that is the main student organization in uh, English Canada to start organizing general assemblies on all the main campuses to discuss this and to, to discuss a strike, to, to, to discuss striking as well um, as the only way to stop uh, the in tuition increases in, in English Canada and Quebec.